Good morning and welcome to the sixth episode of Ahar Gana. I'm standing here in BR Hills Wildlife Sanctuary. BR stands for Biligiri Rangana. It's up in the mountains, it's about four hours south of Bangalore. It's a forest and on the mountain. So that's a double benefit there. The summer is long gone, it's monsoon now, it's cloudy, it's rainy and it's cold. So I'm not able to manage in my t-shirt any longer. But it's beautiful, it's misty, you can see the mist behind me on the mountain tops. And trees all around and the sound that you hear is, apart from my voice, it's the wind rustling in the trees. Beautiful place. If you want to be in the midst of nature, this is where you should be. But you all know that the topic of my videos is not about nature, at least not nature on this scale, but on a much grander scale. So we have been looking at the Hindu calendar for quite some time now. We have almost completed Chandramana. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about Adhika and Kshaya Titi. And with that, Chandramana will really be completed. Now, in the last episode, we saw how Titi is defined as a 12 degree increase in elongation of the moon. And we also saw that we take the elongation at sunrise and based on that we decide the tithi for the entire solar day. Now that leads to some peculiar situations and that is what Adhika and Kshaya Titi are all about. So first one Adhika Titi, the way it happens is like this. So let's say you measure the position of the moon, elongation of the moon at sunrise and you say today is Trithiya. Good, no problem. Then you wait 24 hours, next sunrise, you measure the position of the moon again and you find it is still Trithiya. So you say the next day, solar day, is also Trithiya. So you have now two consecutive solar days which are both Trithiya. This is because the moon is moving so slowly that it has not swept through that 12 degree elongation required to complete Trithiya. Now the converse happens with Kshaya Titi. The first one which I explained just now is called Adhika Titi, the repeating Titi. The second Tritiya is Adhika Tritiya. Now, Kshaya Titi is the converse of this. What that means that you measure the position of the moon at sunrise. Today it's Tritiya, then you wait 24 hours. Next sunrise, you measure the position of the moon and you find it is Panchami. So, what happened to Chaturthi? Disappeared. It did not disappear. The moon was moving so fast that it swept through the 12 degrees of Chaturthi in between two sunrises. So today is Tritiya and the next day becomes Panchami and Chaturthi is skipped. Scientifically this is all fine, mathematically this is all beautiful but in practice it's a problem because I can never be sure what Titi is today. Yesterday was Tritiya so today should be Chaturthi but I am not sure because it could be Adhika Tritya or it could have moved on to Panchami. I have to check the Panchanga to see. So this is my verbal explanation. And as always, I'm going to roll the animation in Stellarium. Take a look. Okay, let's get started. In the earlier uh, animation episode, we have seen the definition of Titi and that is nothing but the time taken by the moon to advance 12 degrees from the sun. And an entire Chandramasa is divided into 30 Titis. We have also seen that a Titi can occur at any time during the day. Sometimes Titi may happen in the morning, meaning a new Titi may start in the morning. Sometimes it may start in the night also. But since the individual lives and all the kriyas we do are governed by the rising of the sun. We rise with the sun in the morning and we do all the kriyas. So the tradition has been adopted where we look at the position of the moon at sunrise. And that tithi which prevails at sunrise, we take it as the tithi for the entire day. Even if the moon moves to the next tithi during the day, we ignore that. We just say the entire day 
has that tithi. All this we saw in the previous episode. This episode of the animation, I am going to illustrate two concepts, the concept of Adhika Titi and Kshaya Titi. So what do they mean? Let's first start with Adhika Titi. So take a look at the screen. I am at uh, June 5th, 2022 and it is sunrise. Sunrise is at 5.52 in the morning. It's very bright in the eastern horizon. The sun is just peeping above the horizon. It is Vaishaka Masa Shukla Paksha. Now the position of the moon is such that the elongation at sunrise at this time is 60.85 degrees. Which means the moon is 60.85 degrees away from the sun at this point in time. Now this means that at this point in time it is Shashti Titi because when the moon is at 60 degrees the fifth Titi Panchami gets over. 12 times 5 is 60. So anything above 60 you are in Shashti Titi and this is 60.85. So at this point in time, Shashti Titi prevails. So we are going to say that this entire day, solar day, which is 5th June 2022, is Shashti Titi. So I'm going to roll the animation. And the entire day is considered Shashti Titi. So I am maintaining here on the screen, you see this label, Shashti Titi. Now day is over, night has started. The clock is ticking, it's 2, 3 p.m. in the uh, 3 in the middle of the night. Now I have come to the next sunrise. It is 6, 6 2022, June 6th, 5.52 the next day. Now let's look at the elongation of the moon. At this point in time, it's 71.88 degrees according to Stellarium. Now that is also Shashti Titi because anything greater than 60 degrees and less than or equal to 72 degrees is Shashti Titi. And this is 71.88, which is less than 72 degrees. So the next day sunrise also Shashti Titi prevails. So we are going to say that 6th June also is Shashti Titi. Now already 5th June was Shashti. Now 6th June is also Shashti Titi. Now, it's quite obvious that in maybe a couple of hours or less than a couple of hours, the moon will cross 72 degrees. And that means Saptami Titi will start, the seventh Titi will start. But we ignore that and we declare that the entire 6th June 2022 solar day is a second Shashti Titi. And that's why it's called an Adhika Titi. In this case, the Shashti Titi is happening as for the second sunrise in succession. So that is called the Adhika Titi. The, prior, the previous 5th June Shashti Titi is the normal Shashti Titi. And the 6th June is also Shashti. That is the Adhika Shashti Titi. So the moon was moving pretty slowly. So between two sunrises, it did not cover 12 degrees. It moved less than 12 degrees from the sun. Now sun is also moving. We have seen that complication earlier in the last episode. But net-net the moon has not moved 12 degrees from the sun in that entire solar day between two sunrises. And that is what results in a Adhika Titi happening. Good. So now I am going to illustrate the idea of Kshaya Titi. To illustrate this idea, I have shifted the date to 17th June 2022. Sunrise is at 5.54 in the morning. Here is the sun just rising on the eastern horizon. It is still Vaishaka Masa, but now it is Krishna Paksha. So you should expect that the moon's elongation will be greater than 180 degrees because 180 degrees would be Purnima and we have now moved beyond Purnima. And as you expect, moon's elongation at sunrise is 215.04 degrees. So instead of you are working your way through the 12 times table, I am showing here if the moon's elongation is greater than 204 degrees and less than 216 degrees, less than or equal to 216 degrees, then it is Krishna Paksha Trithi Atiti. 
and here is the actual elongation 215.04 which is just one degree short of 216 so it is still tritiya tithi so we are going to say as per the convention that this entire 17th june is tritiya tithi now obviously in an hour or two the moon will move beyond 216 and chaturthi tithi will start but we are going to ignore that and say this entire 17th june is tritiya tithi so i'm going to roll the animation see what happens so daytime is in progress now it's noon we're getting past noon evening the sun is setting and night has come now we are approaching midnight and close to the next sunrise and there is the next sunrise so now it is 18th june 2022 5:53 in the morning what happened to the elongation what is the value of elongation elongation is 229.03 degrees now you can check with the 12 times table if you want but i have already done that and if the moon's elongation is greater than 228 degrees it's panchamititi and what is it now 229 degrees so we are going to say that 18th june is panchamititi so the previous day, solar day, was Tritiya Titi, but this solar day is Panchami Titi. So what happened to Chaturthi? Chaturthi got swallowed up between two sunrises. And that's why it's called Kshaya Titi. The moon was moving so fast that between two sunrises, it swept through the entire 12 degrees of Chaturthi and entered Panchami by the time next sunrise happened. That is why Chaturthi disappeared from the calendar. And that's why it's called Kshaya Titi. It is a subtracted Titi. It is gone. It's not there. It's missing. So, this is the concepts of Adhika and Kshaya Titi. But once again, I will emphasize that these are happening because of the convention we have that we are trying to take the concept, the Chandramana concept of Titi and layer it on top of a solar day. And when we do that, it gives rise to Adhika and Kshaya Titis. Otherwise, the Titi count is proceeding seamlessly. That doesn't change at all. If you stay in Chandramana, then the Titis are moving from Tritiya to Chaturthi to Panchami seamlessly. But when you layer it on top of sunrise, that's when Adhika and Kshaya Titis happen. That brings me to the end of this episode. In fact, that brings us to the end of Chandramana itself. As always, I really appreciate your patience. Thanks for staying with me through all these animations. I hope these have been instructive to you. And thank you very much for watching. So that was Adhika and Kshayatiti. It's full of geometry, 12 times table, arithmetic, multiplications, etc. But that is precisely the beauty of the Hindu calendar. That Surya Siddhanta, which was written 1600 years back, was able to define something with mathematical accuracy and then also measure the position of the moon with such accuracy as to define Adhika and Kshaya Titis, based on where the moon was at sunrise. It's problematic in terms of practical usage, but that is also the beauty of the Hindu calendar. So that brings us to the end of Chandramana and also of this episode. But before I move on to Sauramana, in the next episode, I will take you through an actual Panchanga. Now, Panchangas come in many formats. They are mostly printed books in multiple languages. Uh, but I will use an online panchanga called Drik Panchanga. It's available on the internet as drikpanchang.com. It's also available as an app uh, for smartphones. So I will use Drik Panchang and illustrate to you the concepts we have seen already, how they are represented on an actual panchanga. And then it will start making sense to you that all this astronomy which we have seen so far, 
how it actually comes down into our daily life in terms of calendar and time elements on a calendar. In fact, the same Adhika and Kshayatiti that I have already discussed in this episode, I will show it to you once again using Drik Panchang. They also precisely measure Adhika and Kshayatitis and they illustrate it in a pictorial, pictorial fashion rather nicely. It's quite beautifully done by Drik Panchang. So, when you see that, maybe this mathematics will become more clear to you. So, after we look at the Panchang, then we can start placing our festivals on the Panchang, but I will leave that uh, for a future episode. So, as always, thank you very much for being patient, for, for staying with me for all these episodes. I hope you found them instructive. If there is anything you would like me to do differently, please do let me know, leave comments on my web page. And once again, like I said in the previous episode, please discuss this topic with people within your family circles so that this information starts spreading around and there is a network effect. That's the only way this knowledge can be spread to a broader audience. So until the next episode, thank you very much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.